Okay, it's the Alex Neal grudge match this weekend as Stoke entertain Sunderland. Uh, let's cross over to the Britannia first. Hello, Liam. How are we? Hey, Mark. You right? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. To what extent were Stoke fans surprised that Alex Neal survived this latest international break? Um, I didn't think it, I don't think it was in any Stoke fan's mind that he wouldn't survive it. As I've said to you before, he is this. He is the chairman's key guy. This is he was who he was after for years before. I think he actually went for Alex Neal before Gary Rowett came to us, and it just never panned out. Yeah. So we knew he was going to have more time than expected. Can't put in the fact with the amount of injuries we've had. Um, nobody really thought he was going. Some think he should, which is fair enough. You know his record. I think uh, one of the journalists who covers Stoke tweeted out he's won five and uh, he's won fifteen games out of fifty-one. Yeah, which is just a tragedy, really. But no, yeah. I, it wasn't. It wasn't ever in my mind that he'd be going over this break. Yeah, has he reached the point now where only wins will do? I mean, you know, a, a draw against Sunderland isn't going to do him any good, is it? Well, I think we we were told that we've got out of the eight injured players, there should be five or six back. So. You're at a point now, we've signed Kieran Clark as well, who's probably not going to be fit straight away, but you know he's got a left-sided centre-back, which he said he needed. So if you can't take the injuries as an excuse, but he's got none now. Yeah. This next this next patch of games between now and the international break, his, it's make or break for him now. Yeah, the 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 worry for Stoke fans, I'm sure, is 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 about the the, the dry spell in front of goal, isn't it? Because you don't concede too many, um, but scoring has been such a problem, hasn't it? What? How, how does he fix that? Um, Andre Vidigal's back. That's a massive help. Um, we had a we had a time when Ryan Mai played. Um, he he wasn't too good when he first came from the Rotherham game. He was he was didn't perform that well, but. We played rather in the cup and he was he was unbelievable. Um so that's a big miss. Tyrese Campbell's injured. So straight away your front line. I mean, we bought Wesley, I think, as personally as a backup striker. Somebody is when we can't get out, we can go along to him. Yeah. Nobody thought he would have been playing this amount of games. And uh, and we've had Nathan Lowe playing, who bless him, is a young lad, is Stoke youth graduate, but He's not ready to be playing first team football. He's really been chucked in at the deep end. I know he got his goal against Bristol City, but you can't expect an 18 year old to be starting and just banging goals in for you when you're a team lacking in confidence as it is. Yeah, and, and just review your last match before the international break. I mean, that was a tough one, wasn't it? Because you you were so yeah. depleted, um, and to yeah. come up against a side like that at any time this season is going to be hard. But with when you're missing, you know, five key players, it was it was it was a no brainer, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean. 2 0, it was, but they didn't have to get out of first gear, in yeah. all honesty. But Stoke fans didn't expect a result, but the kind of, we we just rolled over, which nobody can really take. And he, he had this makeshift side, and he didn't make a change till the 87th minute when we were 2 0 down. And you're like, well, what? That's not achieving anything. So, yeah. as much as you ain't expecting a result, you expect to show a bit of fight, at least. And it, he just kind of put the game to one side, it felt like, and just, yeah, let's get this out of the way. We'll lose 2-0, don't yeah. get battered, and carry on. So, yeah. Yeah, you can understand it from, from one point of view, can't you? Um, okay, let's talk about um, your your history then was with, with Sunderland, because up to last year, you don't lose at home to Sunderland, and then they came along last August, early on in the season, wasn't it? I remember the game, they they, they snitched, snatched a 1-0 one, one win, and then you stole the manager, yep. I think, a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, you went up there to Stadium of Light um, for the return fixture and battered them uh, as you as you as you're showing there five one. Um, so what are your thoughts going into this one? This is a different Sunderland side to, to last year, though, isn't it? Yeah, um, it is. I'm just worried about Jack Clark mainly. I, the amount of times I've watched him so far this season, he looks when he was with us. He looked like he had a bit of talent, not the full fully fledged um, item or anything like that and I've watched him now I mean I watched him against Sheffield Wednesday and every time he got the ball I thought he was going to put it in the net so but I, it's a bit of a sour spot for me because before we got 
Alex Neil. I was hoping we'd get Tony Mowbray because I think he always, he always got a bit of unfair stick because he looks a bit like a funeral director <laughs> and he's a bit he's a bit dour, isn't he? He's a little bit monotone. I think he gets a real unfair crack of the whip. I thought the job he did at Blackburn was great because he didn't really get backed. So I would have been more than happy. And I thought, and then we got Alex Neil, and I thought, sound, that would be great. And it's turned out that Mowbray's absolutely killing it. And Neil can't buy a win. Yeah. Um, however, this Sunderland side have scored um, in uh, the last three successive victories in away matches and netted three times in each of them. So just, this, is, this is a dangerous Sunderland side, especially away from home. Um, they're just really good to watch. They're just, I think, personally, when you watch them, they're just free. It all seems quite free and easy. It doesn't seem like it's rigid and it doesn't seem like there's a specific system that they follow. It's all really fluid. Yeah. Which is everyone likes watching that kind of football. Absolutely. And let's cross to the guy who's been watching it more than more than most. Uh hi Jack. Um last we saw you we were previewing the uh the derby or well the, the closeness of those two teams. We'll call it a derby. Um dare we talk about that game with you or should we just move on from it? Um, first of all, I want to say, I want to say something to Liam. Uh, Alex Neil was enough, no matter what happens on Saturday. Keep your hands off Tony Mowbray, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you have to address it, really. Don't you? You'd be, I wasn't expecting to come on here and not talk about it. And I hate to be the one to point the finger, but if Eddie's watching, I'm sure you understand the referee just totally, totally lost the game. I mean, fair to yellow card for Dan Neil, fair enough. Even that itself could have possibly been a red card. I wouldn't have been two against that um, but then the second one and it's like I get it's in the rules not a direct abuse of the referees but if we've got to a day and age where you can no longer swear on a football pitch I think we've, we've uh, the game's well and truly gone but it was more the fact that you've got Middlesbrough players on yellow cards the likes of Sam Green were going straight through one of our uh, defenders but there's no second yellow there it was just a lack of consistency and we've heard a Today, more Braves were revealed in his press conference that we got an apology of uh, PGMOL, but I don't really know what use an apology is. Um, yeah, we defended comically in the second half, but it's tough against 10 men. I think it's just one of them games, really. It's not going to define our season. It's yeah. to one-off, but yeah. Yeah, and like you say, on away games, you are you are the team to watch, aren't you? Um, free scoring, okay. Admittedly, some of those have been against Queen's Park Rangers and Sheffield Wednesday, but... Um, this is an exciting time to be a Sunderland fan, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, as someone who goes to a lot of the away games, well, it's even better. Like, we're not very good at home. Typically, we haven't been um, since we came back up. But away from home, we're impeccable and it's absolutely beautiful to watch. It just feels like we play with a lot more freedom when we're away from home. The shuttles are off a bit more. And it, it maybe because it, we're playing against a home team who want to come out and play football in front of their home fans. And therefore, that allows us to create the space and um, and eventually win these games as we have been. Yeah, T- talk us through the the injuries and returns. Then is uh, Alex Pritchard, Bradley Dack expected to be back? And, and of course, you got the suspension to deal with. So, what 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 team news do we expect from Saturday? So, uh, uh, Tony Mowbray said today that we've got Alex Pritchard, Dack, and Equa. I think who really does depend on if they train tomorrow. If they don't train tomorrow, they're very likely not to feature. Um, Ek was been out a while now, so we need to really hurry him back, especially with Neil's suspension now. We're very, very light in the middle of this park. Um, as for everyone else, I think we've got Mayenda, the young, young striker. He's still a couple of weeks away, I think, but I don't think he's going to take best so spot anywhere too soon. But yeah, so it, luckily we've got an area for Pritchard and Dakers. We have got Joe, but the worry is that he might have to drop back to cover for our lack of depth um, in the eight position. Okay. So uh, let's get to predictions then. Um, both team, both away teams won this fixture last year. Liam, what are you, what are you giving your chances on Saturday? Well, I haven't predicted us to win since I've been doing this podcast, which I've noticed is pretty depressing. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go a two, one win. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> and, uh, Jack, be kind to Alex, won't you? And you, you see him on the touchline on uh, on Saturday. What's uh, what score is it going to be? Uh, I'll try my best, but it's it's one of the games that really worries me because not just last season, but historically, Alex Neal has had Tony Mowbray's number, even when they were both at Preston and Blackburn. 
Um, so I'm slightly worried about that. But I think with a better team, going away from the 4 0, we are definitely still the, the informed team, especially away from home. I, I think I'm going to go 2 1 Sunderland. I do think we can get over the line. And as I say, another away win, hopefully. Right. Nice one, fellas. Enjoy the game. We will catch you next week to review it all. As always, your company's well received. And yeah, good luck to you both. Cheers, Cheers Mark. Mark. See, you next week. See you later. All right. Bye.